As children, we fear the dark. Anything might be out there. The unknown troubles us. Ironically, it's our fate to live in the dark. This unexpected finding of science is only about three centuries old. Head out from the earth in any direction you choose. And after an initial flash of blue and a longer wait while the sun fades, you are surrounded by blackness, punctuated only here and there by the faint and distant stars. Even after we're grown, the darkness retains its power to frighten us. And so there are those who say we should not inquire too closely into who else might be living in that darkness. Better not to know, they say. There are 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Of this immense multitude, could it be that our humdrum sun is the only one with an inhabited planet? Maybe. Maybe the origin of life or intelligence is exceedingly improbable. Or maybe civilizations arise all the time but wipe themselves out as soon as they are able. Or here and there, peppered across space, orbiting other suns, maybe there are worlds something like our own, on which other beings gaze up and wonder as we do about who else lives in the dark. Could the Milky Way be rippling with life and intelligence, worlds calling out to worlds, while we on Earth are alive at the critical moment when we first decide to listen? Our species has discovered a way to communicate through the dark, to transcend immense distances. No means of communication is faster or cheaper or reaches out farther. It's called radio. After billions of years of biological evolution on their planet and ours, an alien civilization cannot be in technological lockstep with us. There have been humans for more than 20,000 centuries, but we've had radio only for about one century. If alien civilizations are behind us, they're likely to be too far behind to have radio. And if they're ahead of us, they're likely to be far ahead of us. Think of the technical advances in our world over just the last few centuries. What is, for us, technologically difficult or impossible? What might seem to us like magic might for them be trivially easy. They might use other, very advanced means to communicate with their peers, but they would know about radio as an approach to newly emerging civilizations. Even with no more than our level of technology at the transmitting and receiving ends, we could communicate today across much of the galaxy. They should be able to do much better, if they exist. But our fear of the dark rebels. The idea of alien beings troubles us. We conjure up objections. It's too expensive, some of us say. But in its fullest modern technological expression, it costs less than one attack helicopter a year. We'll never understand what they're saying, some of us say. But because the message is transmitted by radio, we and they must have radio physics, radio astronomy, and radio technology in common. The laws of nature are the same everywhere. So science itself provides a means and language of communication even between very different kinds of beings, provided they both have science. Figuring out the message if we're fortunate enough to receive one, may be much easier than acquiring it. 
It would be demoralizing to learn that our science is primitive, some say. But by the standards of the next few centuries, at least some of our present science will be considered primitive extraterrestrials or no extraterrestrials. Incidentally, so will some of our present politics, ethics, economics, and religion. To go beyond present science is one of the chief goals of science. The debate is, for the moment, moot. We are now on an unprecedented scale, listening for radio signals from possible other civilizations in the depths of space. Alive today is the first generation of scientists to interrogate the darkness. Conceivably, it might also be the last generation before contact is made. And this, the last moment, before we discover that someone in the darkness is calling out to us. Let's permit ourselves, though, a moment of extravagant speculation. Then we can estimate, from how little time we've spent watching each piece of the sky, how many such transmitters there are in the entire Milky Way. The answer is something approaching a million. If randomly strewn through space, the nearest of them would be a few hundred light years away. Too far for them to have picked up our own TV or radar signals yet. They would not know for another few centuries that a technical civilization had emerged on Earth. The galaxy would be pulsing with life and intelligence, but unless they're busily exploring huge numbers of obscure star systems, they'd be wholly oblivious of what's been happening down here lately. A few centuries from now, after they do hear from us, things might get very interesting. Elsewhere, there may be engineering on a scale that dwarfs our proudest achievements. Imagine the energy crisis of a really advanced planetary civilization. They've used up all their fuels, they depend on solar power, but their growth is still severely limited by the energy available. An enormous amount of energy is generated by the local star, but most of the star's light doesn't fall on their planet. So perhaps they would build a shell to surround their star and harvest every photon of sunlight. Such beings, such civilizations, would bear little resemblance to anything we know. Perhaps, someday, there will be an entry in the Encyclopedia Galactica for our planet. Or perhaps, even now, there exists somewhere a planetary dossier, garnered from our television broadcasts or from some discreet survey mission. They might summon up the index of blue worlds in our province of the Milky Way until they came to the listing for Earth. What would they know about us? What would they think of us? We have always watched the stars and mused about whether there are other beings who think and wonder. cosmic setting vast and old beyond ordinary human understanding, we are a little lonely. In the deepest sense, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is a search for who we are.